for calling the Colorado Department of Labor and Employment. We have now transitioned to our new benefit system called IUI Plus. For more information or to learn how to access the new system, please visit coloradoui.gov. Agents on this line will be able to assist in setting up your account, filing a new claim, or requesting weekly payment. Agents will also be able to provide limited information about program integrity issues on your claim. For assistance on all other issues, please visit our website at coloradoui.gov or call 303-318-9000. New legislation has extended some federal benefit programs, including Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, or PUA, and Pandemic Emergency Unemployment Compensation, or PEUC. For more information, please visit coloradoui.gov. Thank you. Please hold on the line for our next available agent. We are experiencing an unusually high call volume. Your estimated wait time is more than 10 minutes.
Your call is important to us. Hey there, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Sorry, <clears throat> sorry about that. I, I read your email incorrectly. I, I read it as Johnny Shell. I left out to see. Yeah. I, when I met, when I set that up, I should have put uh, an underscore before and after the C, so it would stand out. But oh well, no big no deal. Way. Sorry about that. I've got it correct now. How are you doing? I'm hanging in there. So I have a question for you. I'm going to have a guy on later. Uh, should come on. Um, in company out of Pakistan, looking for someone to represent them. Sound interesting or no? I'm willing to talk. You know, I, the, the thing I don't have is the leads. Well, you do actually. I mean, you know, a lot of the companies, all you got to do is go through phone books and uh, pull up what you know. Yeah. Anyway, his name is Irfan, and he'll be on. He'll be on and I'll just hook the two of you together. If something can be worked out, fine. If it can't, Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Right. Trying to repair some things here. Let's see. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. Hello. Hello, Charlie. Mr. Charlie. 
Why is it that Johnny? Hey, You know each other? Yeah. Uh, we were on a Zoom a while back. That's the first time I had met him. Okay. Yeah. And there we have him. Well, we have half of Richard anyway. The other half will show up sooner or later. Mr. Greaves. Afternoon. How are you? Hello, Mr. Richard. Hello, uh, color chair. I'm splendid. Yeah. Kitchen. Hello, this is Rubel from Bangladesh. How are Rubel. you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I need you Happy to meet you, uh, email. I need you to email me. I have a client that's looking for someone to help them distribute some product in Bangladesh. Okay. Uh, I'm Sounds great. Uh, my email address. Okay, please. What kind? What kind of product it is, Charlie? Um, so it's the Lycra company, and which is a massive corporation, and um, they need someone to help them distribute their particular product, which they'll work out a deal with you on. Okay, sounds great. So it's it's only used on their own product. So it's not a competitive thing for someone who's a screen printer. In other words, okay. it would actually put you so your whoever you would be selling your chemical to, this wouldn't cut them off. Um, okay. this would actually give you access to potentially getting into some of the factories that you're not into now. Okay. Anyway, I, I just sent you my email address. Yeah, I got it. I got it. So send me your information. I'll put you in touch with them. Um, could be a good deal for you. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Sorry about that. So, How, so, huh? so how's going everything, Charlie and all of you? You know, I'm, I'm anxious to get out on the road and uh, do some... Uh, <laughs> Some of anything, it's driving me crazy, but I did get my first vaccine on Friday. So uh, oh. in another two and a half weeks, I'll get the second shot and I'm uh, ready to travel if I can know, if I can get anybody to hire me now. <laughs> I'm getting my second shot this afternoon, 3, 4, 30. Good for you. I've got, uh, mine is on February 19th, I get my second shot. It was pretty interesting, we are, actually. Um, we did. We are, we are under our vaccination process is under uh, under process for it's fast short. We don't know when it's gonna happen. Yeah, well, you know, and you're on the younger side, so to that end, <laughs> it may not affect you as much. Right. Correct. I'm not afraid at all. Anyway. Well. I don't know. One of the guys from our industry from way back um, died earlier last week. Oh, that's sad. You know that, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Vern Packard died. Yeah. You know, and I was, I was working on a deal with him, healthy as a horse. Uh, I guess in beginning of January sometime, he came down with COVID. Um, not too long after that, was in a hospital on a respirator, and then was in hospice and gone. Uh, probably in three weeks' time, maybe less. Wow. How old? How old was he? Burns, probably about my uh, probably about my age, late sixties, early seventies, somewhere around there. So uh, a, a vulnerable group as we are. Yeah. But um, it kind of caught me by surprise because he was actually in quite good physical condition. And um, it's always shocking when you uh, hear about somebody who um, you know and they're gone. So, 
Anyway, we do have Johnny Shell on. Hey, everybody. Hello. And 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 another, we have more people from out of the country than from in the country. So, uh, <laughs> Shion, how are you doing? I'm fine, sir. Good, good. Hi, sir. So well. I, I promise I will try not to screw this up so that whatever happens during this session does get recorded so I can post it on my website. But uh, unfortunately, the last one with Farley, I have no idea what happened. I, I did what I normally do. It started to uh, download and then it just died. So, yeah, I, uh, I used to uh, actually also record your, your videos, but at that time I was like focusing on on being a speaker, so I, I didn't record anything. Yeah, uh, sorry about that. And um, it was one that I was really wanting to post, but oh well, we'll have to post this one. We'll have to do another session down the road, that's all. Yeah, sure, um, uh, I'll, be, I'll be glad to. That'll be fun. So we'll see what happens. One of these days, Sian, I need to get you on here. So you can talk all about your the school and Hello, uh, and all of that. Yeah. So yeah, still, still we are in uh, not good position. Uh, all the all the institutions have closed. It's not started. I think uh, it will take two or three months to get uh, get to normal normal situation. Okay. Anyway, um, Johnny, what are you up to? Well, I've been trying to uh, stay busy with uh, consulting work and uh, keeping my eye on developments in the industry, albeit not very few. Um, seems, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like you, Charlie. I'm ready to get out. Um, I, I did sign up for the uh, vaccine a few weeks ago and, and, and was told I would be notified when my, my number comes up. So I anxiously await that. But uh, yeah, just trying to stay sane and uh, busy as best I can. I've had, like I say, a few consulting gigs uh, and, and, and some shops here in Virginia. Um, so it's been, uh, it's been a long road and it's been a bit of a struggle to say the least. Yeah, well, we're all struggling on that. Yeah. I can promise yeah, you. Yeah, I'm preaching to the choir. We've right? gotten a couple of consulting jobs. I haven't had any. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I've been fortunate on that end, uh, you know. And actually, the, uh, the 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 gigs that I've had presented to me were actually a, uh, at least uh, two of them were a result of some of the workshops we you and I used to do back in the day, and. Uh, yeah. That's something I think maybe you and I can explore is once uh, once everything gets kind of moving in the right direction, we we uh, revisit the notion of doing some classes. You know, I'm, I'm always game for that. Yeah. So, uh, Using you know, the old format. Just to get back. I mean, we've got uh, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and yeah. Indonesia on. And I'm anxious to get back to any of those countries, actually, to all of them. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm anxious to get out of my county. <laughs> I, I know that feeling. Listen, the exciting thing now is when you go to the supermarket, it was a place that I hated going to. Now I look forward to going to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I look for reasons to go out. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Who knows? Richard, I sent you a uh, text me or, or message uh, through Facebook. I don't know if you can help out, but um, trying to get a, a, I'm trying to get a list of where the SGIA or SPA or SPIA shows were each year. And I've got some of them, but I don't have all of them. And I haven't dug into my books yet. I've got boxes of them and I'm sure I can pull it up, but I'm not ready to go through hundreds of copies. Don't do that. Leave that to me. When the SGIA had their last show and, uh, Johnny built that gigantic wall of memorabilia. I put together a list and it should be very quick. Yeah, I mean, he will do Sorry, it's on a computer that's downstairs. So, oh, yeah, Charlie, 
I, I might have an Excel spreadsheet. Oh, okay. Um, oh. I was also looking for when SPA became SGI, SGAI, and then when it became SGIA. I yeah, I think uh, about SP, 1980, SP, or about 1980 or 81 into SPAI. And then I don't know when it's changed again. It, it uh, from SPAI to SGIA, that was in the late 90s. I, I would know. say 97. <laughs> Richard's got it. Go. Richard's got everything. These I have upstairs here. So there's a 1949 screenings. Yeah, that's something I, my, that, that's really cool. I, I don't have anything quite that old. My oldest is back from when I first joined in 70, or went to my first show in 77. And I don't know if I have anything from that one, but um, I do have some of the later ones. I've been lazy in that I have not scanned these. I even bought a, uh, a camera style scanner. So it, it, it goes up on a post and it comes out on an arm and it's got software in it that takes the curve out of a book that you're scanning. Huh. And so how, big an how big an image can you scan initially? Actually pretty big, you know, for let's say a bigger size book, but certainly I can scan uh, two pages of these, you know, before two pages at once. Seven. You can, so you can do two pages at once there? Right, and then it assembles it all into a searchable PDF. So hold uh, me to that. Richard, I, where are you? I may send you, um, I have my film from my King Tut from 1979. Yeah. And I can't make any copies of it because no one has a scanner big enough. Oh, oh I see what you mean. Uh, alas, I don't have it. This is again. This is a. It's like it's a camera, right? Style scan. So it takes a picture and runs a PDF of that. Well, that's okay. I mean, if you could get a picture of each sheet of film, I can then make that into what I need. I think. That, that I would do with a 35 millimeter camera on a light board. On a copy board. Maybe, who knows? Well, we'll worry about that some yeah, other time. So in the meantime, I still have my original film, so we'll see what happens with that. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get this stinking book put together and I keep, the more I write, the more I need to write. <laughs> One of those ridiculous things, you know? Um, as you think you've come to somewhat of a conclusion, you realize, eh, I really got to fit in a few more things here. We'll see. Um, how are you feeling, James? I'm feeling so-so. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just taking a lot of time. It's kind of ridiculous. Going in to try to get a new procedure tomorrow. Oh, is that when it is? Yeah, tomorrow there's a the, this company out of uh, Boston area came up with a laser procedure for the lungs, <laughs> and um, hopefully there's a place down here in Connecticut in Southington. I'm gonna drive to tomorrow morning and see what see what they can do for me. Oh, good luck. Because right, yeah, because right now I'm shot. I can't do much of anything. Yeah. yeah. As I said, COVID's real. It's a real thing. You guys be safe. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So, we wish you the best, James. Hey, thank you. Yeah. Mm. How, uh, how are things in Bangladesh? Are, are the factories starting to open there? Yes, sir. Now it is going smoothly everywhere, all over the Bangladesh. They are they are all functioning now. Yes, all are functioning now smoothly. Well, that's a good thing. In Sri Lanka, are they uh, are the factories opening or are they still having issues? Hello, sir. Oh, 
Are the factories in Sri Lanka opening or are they uh, still on lockdown? Uh, some some factories have they have started uh, working, but uh, I think around fifty percent factories they have closed down. Okay. And still they are in lockdown. And I India know, the uh, same? Huh? India? In I know India is still pretty heavily on lockdown, although they are now allowing some transportation, so yeah. you can now take buses and stuff around. Because I, I I'm on with. Um, Prem uh, that, and um, I see I stay in touch with him almost daily, and so they're actually starting to move around. Whether the factories are actually opening or not is another thing, because uh, they're not too far behind the U.S. in terms of um, the number of people that are infected and the number of deaths and stuff. Right. I think it's them as number two, and uh, Brazil is number three. Yeah. But we still lead the world by way, way too much. We have 25% of the total deaths. Uh, I thought it was 20, but 20 to 25, we make up 4% of the world population. So yeah. ridiculous. How is it going in Indonesia? Small scale businesses are open, um, but um, like my friends play with 30, 30 employees, their op uh, operation. Uh, operational, but uh, large garments, I don't think so. Uh, still, still, maybe not lockdown, but they reduce reduce the shift or something. So um, yeah, it's not as as smooth as without COVID. Yeah, well, I don't think anything is going to be as smooth as when things were normal. Yeah. Is there is anyone from Vietnam? I have no idea what's going on there. I talked to Chu quite a bit in Malaysia. He said they're on their, uh, they're locked down currently. Um, he was down about 20% and uh, last year, uh, which I thought given uh, everything was not bad. Um, I agree. I know people who would love to be at 80%. Down 20%. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know about Vietnam. I think they uh, their their infection rate, according to the numbers anyway that are being reported, has been quite low. Uh, but I think still they're in a semi lockdown. I know trade shows are going on. I've got a friend who works with trade shows over there. She's a show part of the show organization group, uh, and they have actually resumed trade shows, although masks are still being required, social distancing, things like that. Uh, haven't heard from Mark Gervais on what China's up to, but I do have another friend in China. Uh, they are moving ahead cautiously, uh, but things are uh, coming back. Uh, he's able, he, he makes uh, screen printing presses, manual presses, and a few automatics. And uh, he says they've been operational, although limited. So, Hmm. Hopefully, with the vaccine getting out, we'll we'll see a return to whatever the new normal is going to be. My concern is these uh, variants of this virus that are now mm, starting yeah. to pop up. Um, we've got the UK variant here in the US. Uh, I think we've had a few cases of the uh, Brazilian. Uh, was it is it Brazilian? I thought it was somewhere in Africa for that. Well, they, there's they the really... African, and then there's uh, the Brazilian one, which uh, yeah. hit one of the states. I think North Dakota or one of those. Yeah, and, uh, they're really concerned about all of those that are spread because they're theoretically spreading like crazy. Yeah. Well, and the big question is, is the vaccine able to handle these variants and how long will it be before the vaccine mm. doesn't? Yeah. You know, because it's, it's mutated three or four times past. But they do the same thing every year with the flu vaccine. You know, they have they several different varieties of the flu vaccine because of all the variants and mutations. And so... Um, I, I, I try not to. I try not to let fear enter my mind. I do know it's real. 
but we've got some great medical science that is heavily focused on getting this thing under control and uh, God willing, that'll happen. Well, one of these days, it'll be nice to uh, look back at this, but right now we're still looking ahead at it. Yeah. Charlie, have you heard anything about ISS in Long Beach in April? So I, I was actually in touch with uh, Sydney um, just Friday because uh, I got a uh, email from Scott Ritter about doing his show and his show and ISS in Long Beach sit on the same dates, oh, wow. which, which creates a bit of a problem. And so uh, I wrote Sydney saying, how does it look for Long Beach? And she said, well, right now it's still on. Um, my own feelings are uh, it's, it's the end of April and California right now is having the worst of the pandemic out of all the states. Right. And do I think they'll be able to clear it up between now and April? Um, personally, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I still had to commit to the ISS show versus Scott show, which is supposed to be in uh, Illinois and Chicago. And I'm not so sure that even that state is going to be open. Right. So yeah. uh, it may be a moot point when all is said and done. He, I, I've recorded, or I'm supposed to do uh, a couple of sessions for him um, April 1st, and I think April 8th or something like that, um, in lieu of the two shows that he's not having, which would have, you know, Kansas City and uh, Minnesota. Right. Um, so I have he's just going to do people. Chicago? I, uh, he's theoretically putting together Chicago, but... Um, whether he can pull it off or not, it, it really comes down to what the state will allow. Right, I just right. don't see California as allowing anything to happen in April. Um, around June, maybe, uh, depending on how many people are vaccinated. But I mean, California right now is having so many deaths that they've had to, I was watching the news last night, they had to uh, fly in morticianers to help with the number of people that are dying daily. Yeah, and so um, you know, I don't. I, even on an optimistic look, uh, I don't see April as really working. But you know, they haven't called it off yet. I think the biggest thing with I with quote unquote ISS or Impressions Expo is that show the the Long Beach show is their biggest show, and so if you're going to um, move anything and manipulate anything that's a show that you want to do it i mean that show draws 20 some odd thousand people versus the others that are anywhere from about four to six thousand right um so to me you know they're going to keep trying to find a venue a, a way of putting that show on and of course as it moves on later in the year you start to now interfere with next year's show but um It'll be interesting. I do have Michael Ryan coming on in two weeks from FESPA to talk about what FESPA is doing and their show. And they've moved their show to October, which is uh, their show, I think, is the week before the uh, Printing United show, which is definitely going to be an interesting thing for a lot of companies. Do they do FESPA? Do they do Printing United? Or do they do both? Um, it's going to be an interesting situation there. Um, I spoke to a couple of U.S. companies that are that normally would have been at FESPA, but uh, due to the pandemic, are thinking of not going overseas until they feel more comfortable. Whether they'll do Printing United or not is also up in the air, even though it isn't until October. And certainly by that point, we should have a better feel for um, whether or not they have this under any kind of control or not. Yeah. So I don't know. You know, everything is a so this year. Uh, this year, uh, where is sitting in the FISPA show? When is it? Uh, oh, I said this year. When is going to sit uh, sit on uh, the FISPA show? 
the FESPA show is uh, supposed to be, uh, I think, the first week of October. Okay. Why did it's and, it, and it's in Amsterdam. Oh. So originally the show was going to be in, um, I, I don't even, uh, in um, Germany. And they then moved it to Amsterdam and then they moved it again, but left it in Amsterdam. Who knows what's what's what? I mean, um, right now, uh, Americans can't even travel to Europe and vice versa. Europeans can't come to the U.S. So um, don't know what's going to happen and how long it'll be before they open up the, the borders again. But um, certainly going to be several months. I, I know uh, if you do come go out of the U.S. and come back, you've got to quarantine for two weeks. And a lot right. of places where you're going to, you have to quarantine. So any kind of trip is not exactly a one week long trip. Every trip is going to kind of uh, take up two to four weeks besides whatever you have to do while you're gone. Exactly. Uh, FESPA is the 12th through the 15th of October. Yeah, and then a week later is uh, Printing United. Does anyone know the condition in Nepal? I have an invitation to uh, build a line printing set up in, in, I don't know, somewhere in Nepal, but I haven't checked out if, if, it, if there is, if it's safe or not. May, maybe Shihan or Rubel know how the condition over there is? Sorry, I didn't get your point. No, um, I have an invitation to build up, uh, uh, to help uh, a screen printer build up a line table um, workshop in Nepal. But I, I don't know whether it's safe to fly there or not. I mean, um, so far, actually, so far I know Nepal now is under control. Everything is under control. Okay. Well, I, I uh, noticed a, a friend of mine that's in, um, in, uh, is in Phuket, uh, Thailand. Okay. And Thailand has had, considering the size of the country, it's seven, I think it's 700 million people. Um, they've had very few cases, 20 some odd thousand cases, I think, which is really very, very small. Um, I, can, I can look it up actually, but uh, some of the countries are just not having a whole lot of issue or they're not doing a lot of testing, one of the two. You know, if you don't test, of course, you don't have a lot of people, but that doesn't mean that you don't have um, a mortality rate but um, from what it looks like, Thailand isn't having too much of an issue. Okay. Actually, many of the country, they give up about the COVID-19. Yeah, I mean, I have no idea what goes on in, in Nepal. Maybe the altitude keeps it away, I'm not sure. Hopefully, <laughs> but maybe I fly there in 2022, 21. It might be a little I'll... more comfortable at that point. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Richard, what are you up to besides getting your shot later today? Uh, so this morning, I was fixing a Wilflex IMS. I think we lost you. Yeah, we definitely lost you. We've got a good face shot of you, but I'm not sure it's one that you'd like to keep out there.
There you go. Now you appear to be back. I'm back now. Did you hear anything I said? No. No, nothing. I think you're frozen again. At least in a better pose, though. <laughs> hey, just real quick. Uh, Nepal has had 271,000 cases of COVID. Uh, they had 171 new cases reported in the last week, I suppose. Um, as far as deaths, one second. 100 and some odd cases in a week isn't bad. We we get that in, an, in about a half hour. Yeah, yeah, really. Uh, just give me one sec here. I can tell you what uh, this website is reporting. So if you go to Nepal, will you go and climb uh, the mountain or no? No, I, um, the deal was I, uh, I helped them to set up a, a line, line printing, table, you call printing it? Yeah. table printing set up like Indonesian way uh -huh. with um, the other small pallets type and yeah, and they, they, uh, what do you call it? They pay for no, my flight were... and my accommodation. So I got, I get to stay for a holiday and help them, help, uh, help them to build the Indonesian type uh, uh, table printing. Because uh, it's the Indonesian type is quite space saving. So it's not the long haul, uh, long lines of tables, but there's only like uh like three stations but the uh, pallets can be 100 so it's very good for water base um screen printing and for someone who got a um, limited space and there's no color limitation that's why he's interested in hiring me to visit nepal it's it's one of those countries that I've always found interest interesting, but was never really interested in climbing the uh, mountains there. Yeah. Well, I just I just go I I go there. I plan to go there actually with my wife. So, um, yeah. It's a beautiful she, country. Yeah, she. My wife is a mountain girl, or what do you call it? Someone who likes to. Not hitchhike. Yeah, someone who likes to climb mountains, but not the extreme way. Only uh, sightseeing. Yeah. So yeah, the deal was uh, I bring my wife and I help them like for a week to set up, and then we go holiday with them. Yeah, that's a it's a nice deal <laughs> because I uh, I would like to go to India. Yeah, Sri Lanka, ne Nepal, uh, Thailand. Thailand, my wife has already no, been why, there. So. Why not Bangladesh? Yeah, Bangladesh, of course, of course. All, <laughs> all these, especially uh, if Bangladesh, I can have... you know, You know the longest sea beach in the Bangladesh? Mm -hmm. Longest sea beach and the mango forest. Okay. And welcome to... Welcome to Mango Forest and uh, the, the longest sea beach in you know, the, Cox's only, the only yeah. thing they ever did for me when I went to Bangladesh was they stuck me in traffic. <laughs> oh, traffic in the but world. Traffic, I think in Southeast Asia is the same everywhere, everywhere. I mean, uh, Indonesian is also, um, yeah, a little bit extreme on the traffic side. Yeah. Bang, where are you? Um, where are you in? In Bangladesh. In Bangladesh. Um, hello, Ruben. Yes, Hi. I'm from Bangladesh. Okay. Which city are you in? 
Which city in Bangladesh? In Dhaka. Ah, Dhaka, okay, okay. The capital of the Bangladesh. Yeah. Okay. Maybe someday I'll visit you. <laughs> if I can. Sure, you will come. <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> uh, Charlie, you, you, you enter in Bangladesh, right? Maybe. I've been uh, Bangladesh a, a couple of, several times. Oh, several times. Okay. Yeah. I think so, uh, either, so how do you feel so how do you feel about Bangladesh except traffic jam yeah I I definitely have to admit I I like going there um, okay I hated the traffic you know everything everyone said oh yeah we're, we're going yeah. to a factory. And now it is improving now it is improving because the government of Bangladesh they are setting some flyovers and they are improving the traffic systems now you, it is uh, for well, improving. Right. The traffics and even the roads going into the factories were um, interesting, but um, <laughs> I don't think anything took less than two hours to get to, and some of them were uh, considerably longer than that. So you know, even going to factories, you could plan on maybe two in a day if they were close yes. to each other. Uh, otherwise, one, and um, you know that makes for a difficult time. But um, certainly, I enjoyed myself there. I, I thought I, I, I definitely liked the food, although yeah, uh, yeah. it was interesting eating at some of the factories. They, they had to um, not have as much in the way of spices, but they also had to find a spoon for me. Mm. <laughs> I'm not I'm not very good about working with one hand. Okay, <laughs> we are we are we are have a chair to it the handy. Uh, it's it, it was, I mean, the factories were huge, uh, the ones that I went to. And, um, you know, it's funny, I think as, as most Americans don't understand anything about Bangladesh or Sri Lanka um, in terms of the size of factories there. Uh, I've got, I'm, I was just dealing with somebody who's going to be trying to work with someone on putting together an addition to a factory and, and ordering 47 new automatics. Um, that's, you know, just a crazy amount for what Americans know. I mean, for someone here to, to order two or three automatics at once, we think is pretty crazy. 47 at once is unheard of in this country. Yes. And this is the, that is the biggest factory in the Asia almost. Yeah, well, I think no. The biggest one is definitely more um, uh, the yeah, one that Mark Gervais works for, which um, Ning Ning Ning. over here, over here, Ning screen printing sector is very, very big. Well, in China, I mean, Ningbo. I think Mark said he had 160 automatics, and then 10 yeah, I was there of tables. Yeah, well, you were there. There you go. Yeah, and now they're that's building it. a place in uh, Vietnam that's even bigger. I understand. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, because of the tariffs that Trump imposed, well, that did nothing. So China just moved anything that was going to be for export. They moved all that to Vietnam. So on paper, it appears that the export is coming from Vietnam. And so there's no <laughs> tariffs. I mean, it's uh, but yeah, Mark's got a huge, huge factory there. He's got three print buildings, three floors each. And they're just jammed with ovals, and uh, they've got a few floors that are table printing. Uh, they do their own knitting. They do. Um, they do everything. They take it from scratch. Yeah, I should. I should be quiet now. <laughs> well, it doesn't really matter. I mean, uh, Ningbo, do you have any idea about uh, uh, for table uh, table machine? Anybody do have any idea about the table machine? Table machines, long table with yes. automatic, automatic. Yeah, machine. yes, okay, yes. Okay, I have seen the YouTube. Yes. Well, I, when I was that's, in that's China, in Bangladesh. When I was in China, they did have some automatic uh, printers and flash units that worked on tables. As a matter of fact, I have yeah. a video of it. If you ever want it, I can probably pull up the video. I thought yeah, when I was at a when I was at a trade show in China the last time, they've got. Um, they're, they're essentially little uh, uh, 
cars that just drive down the table and they've got yeah. sensors that uh, sense when they're at the garment. And, you know, as long as the placement of the garment is, or the piece is within just a few, uh, you know, a millimeter or two, the print goes in the right direction and on down the line. Yeah, the uh, yeah, video almost. that I shot, they had this machine running for three days. It's just a one color machine and it just kept stacking the ink just to show that it could hit the exact same spots same again. Spot, yeah. Of course, at the end of the three days, it looked like a high density print, but um, it was on the money. And then yeah. about uh, a meter behind it or a, a yard behind it is where the flash unit was. Flash unit comes and in. it was right. following it. Uh, right. I thought it was pretty cool, actually. I mean, it was not lightning fast but it, it it was just consistent it just kept on going and going and going so people over here they are uh, they are starting to use that machine uh, a couple of days i i have seen that machine one of them one of my clients they maybe brought it from where i don't know but they are using it yeah, what I found interesting was they did it with a one color job, but they didn't set up a multicolor job. And I'm just wondering how well you can, uh, and I'm sure you can adjust the machine so that uh, the colors hit in the right spot. You know, I can't believe they built one machine that can do the same thing again and again and again, but they couldn't put a second one or a third or a fourth one behind it that, um, would print appropriately uh, and, and possibly even wet on wet as opposed to having to dry everything in between. Although between Bangladesh and Sri Lanka and stuff, uh, nobody prints wet on wet for the most part. <laughs> mm. Teaching uh, them they, wet they on did. wet was the big problem. Huh? I they what? Teaching them wet on wet was the problem that I had. This year, to teach the principles and break their habits of the last 50 years. So they could print on an oval. It's it's a mindset for one thing, um, and and they just they indiscriminately take their color order. So um, as opposed to engineering a print so that you do not have to flash, they don't really deal with that. They just kind of uh, I I ran into the problem when I was working in Istanbul, where the company I was working with had to do the uh, shirt for the Olympic games that were gonna be in Greece. And it was a 12 color job. And then they had a 14 color press. And it's like, well, we can't flash enough. And it's like, well, why don't we just engineer it out so that you don't have to. And they were just amazed that we could be able to do like uh, four colors flash, four colors flash, and then the rest and, right. and be done um with the last four colors and the job ran flawlessly and it's like well, now you understand it right yeah no it was like it was great for that job and no done sometimes Multiple stroke two one huh? two three four four strokes at every screen oh. yeah well my first trip to bangladesh i watched the company do uh they were printing white on i forget what color but it was three strokes of white flash, three more strokes of the same white, but on a different screen flash, then three more strokes of the same white flash. And it's like, really? It took nine strokes and three screens just to put the white down. Um, showed them how uh, I brought a double squeegee with me, eliminated one screen, did a double stroke flash, double stroke flash, and was finished and looked as good as what they had done, and of course, took considerably less time. Nobody was interested in the double squeegee. Too hard to clean. But, but yeah, we had we had a we had a discussion about the double squeegee. Yeah. Last time, Charlie, did you yes. remember? Yep. Oh, and, yeah. But and and to I already. I also. Go ahead. Sorry. I also discussed with uh, some of my clients about the double squeezy. Uh, they're they're interesting. They're interested to use double squeezy. Uh, also, they mentioned that if, the, if if it is productive, 
I mean, if the double is squeezy, if we increase the production, they are, inter uh, they are ready to use. Okay, so here's a problem that I ran into, and you're going to probably all laugh at this. So in speaking to the people that took me around to show the double squeegee and the roller squeegee and stuff, I said it improved their production by probably 25%, okay? If you go from three right. strokes down to two strokes, and if you go okay. from three screens down to two screens, not that the number of screens matter, but the number of strokes do, and if you have more available, it takes less to set it up. I said, I don't understand why no one is buying one of these if it does save them 20, 25% of their time. Actually, over here, people are, uh, they listen, uh, the listen, uh, the machine manufacturer instruction. Hmm. Like uh, here, most um, uh, most of the uh, my client, they are using a, a MNR machine. Right. Hmm. Okay. They follow the instruction of MNR people. Hmm. What they said. Hmm. Well, here's the reason I that they told me that people didn't want to buy something that would improve their production by 20, 25%. Those running the factories are not the owners. They're the, they're the managers. And exactly. So so if their production all of a sudden jumps 25%, what they're afraid of is that the owner is going to say, why didn't you do this sooner? And so rather right. than having to explain to the owner anything, they just leave things as they are because the owner is happy with what's, what they're getting off of it. And so they leave it alone. And the only ones that you could really deal with that would make any sense at all are those that are the owners. Well, in Bangladesh and Sri Lanka, I don't think I ever met an owner, or if I did, it was one or two. Uh, but most of the big, big factories were run by a, ma by a management team and not by the owner. Matter of fact, the owners may not even be in, in the country. In future, in future, if you come to Bangladesh, I'll bring you to some owner to explain the, uh, yeah, use, uh, the advantage of using double, uh, double squeezy. You know what? I'll send you a video and you can okay. take it to them and you can sell them the, the double squeegee and I can get you the dealership on that. Okay. Okay, please. Yeah, that's not a problem. I, the only problem I ran into in Bangladesh was I would show, uh, I, I'm not sure if it was, Bang, I think it was Bangladesh was the last one. Uh, who's a company that prints uh, a lot of the Nike stuff? Nike, the Esquire? Yeah. So I went there. I actually gave him a double squeegee. He was printing okay. a, uh, a pants leg for Nike. And it was okay. uh, a black print. So he was doing a double or a triple stroke of black flashing, okay. doing another three strokes of black and flashing. And okay. I can't remember if it was a third screen or not. In any event, we put on a double squeegee and cut it down to two strokes. When I saw him, when I did my seminar at the end of the week, he came up and said, my production went up by 25%. Okay, that was it. There is no and, next and so, step. So he has one for one machine and that's all. And, and they had, I think, eight or nine machines at that company. Okay. No, no response. So, you know, there are some things that um, I do understand. There are some things that I don't understand. Maybe I was in production for too long. And to me, if somebody came in the door and showed me something that was going to improve my production by 10%, 5%, I was all over that. Here, you're looking at 15, 20, 25, 30% improvements, nothing. And when I, when I, when you I mentioned that the people are afraid of that. If they increase, increase the process, maybe the owner of the factory, they will say, why you make it, you didn't make it sooner. <laughs> but you know, here's the thing. They could turn around and say, hey, there's this new invention and we were smart enough to buy it and improve yes. production. So to me, the whole idea of, oh, 
I can't show it to the owner because it'll make me look bad. It really won't. If you give it to the owner the way you should, it actually makes you look great, not bad. Okay, I'll promote that. I'll promote that to some of my client. You know, uh, I mean... And, and you send me the video, uh, yeah. dem video demonstration. I will, I'll show the video demonstration to the factory. Actually, it's right, it's on my website. I'll even uh, let you know. When I write you, I'll tell you how to get it. Uh, to get on my website is no problem, but I have all the videos on my website, so you can just pull it up. Okay. But... Um, you know, working overseas is always an interesting thing because I really love the idea. And I, and I thought the factories for the most part were some of the cleanest factories between Sri Lanka and uh, Bangladesh. Unfortunately in Indonesia, the only one I went to was BMS, which was great, but I didn't get to any other factories there. But between Sri Lanka and Bangladesh, I've gone to quite a few and they're, they're spotless. I mean, they're clean. They're organized, but they're slow. And and uh, what's the biggest company in Bangladesh? Um, the Moscow. I, I went there. Yeah, uh, the one that has a statue out front of the uh, printers. Is it Moscow? Maybe. Moscow Group. Square Group. I'll ha I have to pull it up. Um, Maverick? No. In any event, uh, the factory itself was gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. The lunchroom, I mean, they did a whole breakfast for us. That was great. Everything was beautiful. The ink room, all of it. In talking to the production manager, I said, well, how many prints a day do you get off an automatic? He said, well, on a good day, really good, we get 1800 prints. And I'm thinking, that's a good day. I would kill somebody if that's all they could do on a good day. Okay, it should have been probably in the neighborhood of uh, 2,500 to maybe coming close to 3000 prints in a day. Because their runs are long. It's not like they have to do 200 pieces and break down into another 200 pieces. It was like, good size runs. So once you're set up, you should be able to really get to close to 3000. So Charlie, so what you are waiting for? So can you say so you can um, make a consultancy farm over Bangladesh? What am I waiting we can, for? We can ask this to you. Someone who's willing to pay my fees because <laughs> getting from, uh, from Colorado to Bangladesh, among other things, takes me 35 hours. Or you should hire me because I'm on the East Coast. It's way right. cheaper. It'll only take you 30 hours as opposed to 35 hours. I, I, I know my daily rate is much less than yours, Charlie. That's true. Hire me because I've already been to Bangladesh, so I know all the ins and outs of how to get there. I know how to get there. You get on a plane and you go. But, well, um, yeah, you know, I it's funny. In order when I went over in September. You know, what I found interesting... Um, in talking to some of the people in Bangladesh, they won't spend money on certain things like a double squeegee costs, I don't know, $250 or something like that. So I went into a new fa a factory that had just gotten in a new 18 color m &R machine. And they bought nine flash units for it. Yeah. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. You're worried about a $250 squeegee, and yet you just spent $75,000 on flash units. Incredible. You know. Um, print, flash, print, flash, print, flash. Oh, absolutely. Uh, as a matter of fact, I went to one of the factories that had ovals, and I have videos of it. Not only was it print, flash, print, flash, it was print, flash, flash, print. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've seen double screens, but I haven't seen double flashes in the past. And they didn't just have one of them. They had print, flash, flash, print, flash, flash. It, it was, you know, it, it it's difficult to um, understand because if you're flashing that much, you're heating up your palettes to a crazy extent. 
but who knows? Anyway, one of these days, somebody will invite me back to Bangladesh or Sri Lanka or both. I mean, as long as I'm on that side of the world, it's easier to jump over from one to the other than it is to start from here. I'm still waiting for another invitation to go to Indonesia. I really yeah. want to go to Bali. Ah, you haven't <laughs> been. I haven't. I, thought... I was in. Charlie, Solo. me too. Charlie, me too. Please yeah. stick with me. <laughs> I was Talk in Solo, too. which was very nice. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, in uh, Jakarta, which. I thought really... when you were in Jakarta, you were with your wife. No, my wife has never been. I, I wanted to take her with me on my next trip. And that one got canceled. Okay. So, yeah, I would. I, I thought Jakarta was actually really, really nice considering the size of the city. My, and much, considering the traffic? Much cleaner and much more organized than I thought. Solo, I thought was wonderful. It's always good. And then, of course, Bandung, I had a great time there. I, I love the food in Bandung, especially that flying fish thing. Well, it was a deep fried fish that made it look like it was flying. It's actually served on a pedestal ah, and it looks okay, like a yeah. flying fish. But, uh, and the food was spicy as hell there. Woo. Mm. But that was good. The only place I think it was crazier in terms of spice was in Pakistan. I swear they put spice in the water in Pakistan. <laughs> I'm sorry. There was... I, I went out, I was taken out one night, we went to the shore and they had lobster on the menu and I'm figuring, oh, lobster, at least I won't have to deal with spice. I was wrong. It was stuffed mm. with spice. It was, it didn't, and I like spice, but man, they just really go uh, Over. Heavily, heavy into it. But as I get older, my taste buds become duller and so I, I'm able to have more and more spice. Anyway, gentlemen, I think it was an interesting day. I'm not sure if we spoke about any screen printing stuff, but a little bit here and there. Um, now I'm going to have Michael Ryan on in two weeks, if you're interested. Um, we'll kind of chat about FESPA and what's going on on that part of the, uh, on the European side. And uh, other than that, I look forward to maybe having you guys come back. I'll be... Um, uh, I will email you, you got to give me, give me a full name from Bangladesh. Okay. Type me your full name. I've got everybody else's. I know that, but, um, look forward to, um, maybe catching up with you guys and, uh, Johnny, I'll, I'll give you a buzz later. I'll call you. Okay, great. And uh, thanks for the I'll, opportunity. Yeah, I'll, I'll check in with my other guy. I was surprised that he wasn't on today, but um, they are 12 hours different from where I am. So I started 11, and he has a new baby. So, uh, yeah, these other folks well made it. That he uh, is taking care of the kid. So, Charlie, Charlie, you got my name? Um, yeah. uh, Ruble. Yes. Got it. And, uh, and Ruble. My email address is colorchem1988 yep. at yep. gmail.com. So it, it's Ruble uh, Octor Raman. Ron, Rana. Yes, yes. So it's three, three different. So it, there's a break in between, right? You can call me Ruble. Ruble, I no. will call you. I'll Ruble. call you Ruble. You can call me Charlie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you all for being on. Um, yeah, I'm going. I'm got my fingers crossed that this session will be recorded. I'm not sure why, but uh, we'll see what happens. In any event, hope to see most of you in uh, about two weeks' time. James, hope that things work out with you on that new yeah, deal. James, take care, please. Godspeed. We're all we'll uh, Thank you. Prayer. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Gentlemen, yeah. Shion, have a good one. Harley, one of these times we'll have you back. I, I need you to talk more about your uh, found, the foundation uh, that you're working with or the kids that you're working with and stuff. Okay. And maybe yeah, some uh, pictures.
pictures of some of the baby stuff that you do. Okay, I will. Terrific. Yeah. So, uh, gentlemen, I'm going to cut this one out. Thank you again. Thanks, Take Sarah. care, guys. Thank you, Gabriel. Okay. Stay uh, safe and sound. Yeah. Bye. All of you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe. Okay, thank you. Take care, Shihan. Okay. You too, sir. Say, be safe. Hello. Yeah, thank you. Hope to see you soon. Charlie, I sent you a link to the spreadsheet that Johnny supplied us for two years ago. Oh, great. Thank you. Email. But I've got some stuff that I'll also send you from downstairs. Okay, so that's on email, yes? Yes, do uh, Dr. Prince. Great. Um, I'll probably have some other questions for you. I'm going to have a fair amount of stuff because one of these days I'm going to move out of my house. Um, oh, good. I need, to, I, I need to go through because I have some stuff from other publications from back in the 80s. And I don't know if you have some of those or not, but t-shirt retailer and stuff. I would, I would love that because I didn't save a lot of those because I would just uh, it, it cost them. Well, I have, I have a couple only because uh, they had a contest and we ended up winning a couple of the bronzes in that. And so I have some of those, et cetera. I will try and put together what I can for you. Thanks, Joe. Because otherwise my wife is going to throw those out and me. So uh, I will see what I can do. That's why I've okay. got a storage unit, two of them. Uh, yeah, I probably need to get one. I mean, I've got boxes of uh, magazines and stuff. I need to find out if uh, I have a lot of foreign magazines. I don't know if that's of any interest to you. I like those too. They can be I've got tons. Well, I was in a lot of the magazines, so um, I do have a fair amount from Germany, especially. I just pulled out the, the uh, Impressions magazine that had you and Ted Stahl and four or five other people standing uh, out in a, in a garden someplace. Is that right? Yeah, I just opened up a box and there you were looking at me. Send me a shot of that one because I'm not sure if I have that, but, uh, but I do have quite a few of the mag I, and I do get a lot of the German magazines. I'd, I'd like to be scanning those, yes. Yeah, uh, German and also from, um, I think it's Belgium. But, uh, and I could certainly hook you up with them so that you can get the uh, magazines directly from them. That would be terrific. I would love that. Well, I'll put together what I have and uh, when I'm feeling flush, I'll send, send it to you because I have a feeling that the weight of it is going to be pretty extraordinary. I'll pay for the shipping. Well, if you'll pay for the shipping, I'll certainly get it. I'll, I'll put a, several boxes together for you. Terrific. Terrific. Gentlemen, have a good one. Hey, pal. <laughs> Bye. See you in a couple Bye. of weeks. Bye. See you. Right. Take care. Bye, Bye Johnny. Bye. Good, everybody. Hi, Richard. Good to see you.